Hello and welcome to the vlog, which this time round is another DIY vlog and it involves that thing, the stove. You see, in heavy rain, I'd noticed there was a trickle of water coming down the flue pipe from outside. And also the steel metalwork around the chimney collar was beginning to look a little bit rusted and horrible, so it really did need attending to. And this is how I did it. First of all, I had a look to see exactly where the water was coming in from. As you can see, it ran down the flue, just a trickle, but annoying nonetheless, from where the flue exits the roof. Outside, the collar was mucky from burning coal, that's normal, but peer closely at where it sits on the roof and you can see that there was rust bubbling up. Even before the leak, I'd had it in mind to tackle this one day. Also, the seal between the collar and the roof looked pretty manky as well. That's supposed to be watertight, but it was no great surprise I had a leak. The collar needed to come off, and in theory it was held down with just two bolts. How hard could it be? Turns out, quite the palaver. First of all, the bolts had been sealed in with some very solid gunge, which I had to pry out with a chisel and a screwdriver. Eventually, I managed to get the bolts to a point where I could get a socket on them, but they didn't want to move, so I realised I'd need to hold the nut underneath while unscrewing the bolt. For that, I'd need to take the internal trim off, you can see it's just a wooden edge held on with panel pins, so that was easy to pry off. There's also this fireproof stuff, don't know what it is, that separates into two halves around the flue. But lo and behold, the underside of the collar bolts weren't within that trim. They're further out, so to get to them I'd need to remove this entire roof panel, and you can see what a headache that would be. Instead, I came up with another plan a hole saw. I would drill two holes in the ceiling woodwork exactly underneath where the bolts come out. I removed all the trim and measured outside how far away from the flue the bolts were, then I drilled. Success! Except there is no nut on the bolt! I needn't have drilled those holes after all! What the bolts needed was a damn good thrashing! And eventually, with brute force, I unscrewed them. At this point it rained again, so I could see exactly where the leak was. Not between the flue and the collar, as some had suggested, but, as I thought, water creeping underneath the collar and then dribbling down its side. With the bolts removed, taking up the collar should be simple. Yes, there'd be some old sealant under there, but a bit of leverage should sort that out, or so you'd think. No, it really didn't want to lift off, did it? That couldn't just be the collar sealant and turned out to be the cement sealing between the neck of the collar and the flue inside. This stuff was like concrete and refused to be chipped out even with a hammer and chisel. If ever you need to build a nuclear bunker, use stove cement. This called for the purchase of a new toy. Sorry, I mean essential DIY tool. A vibrating multi-tool to which you fit little blades. Dang it, that cement was so strong it blunted the first blade within two minutes. Not to be beaten, I bought a set of carbide-tipped sanding blades. They can go through brick, apparently. Let's find out. At last! The huge expense of the tool and the bits was worth it as the cement began to disintegrate. It took a lot of goes, but you can finally see the flue begin to separate from the collar. And at last they were apart. Now I should be able to pry the collar off. Ta-da! All that effort, so now I could start tackling the actual problem, the grotty roof. 
There was quite a combination of yuck here. Old bits of a seal, that's the red stuff. Rust, white muck, goodness knows what else. It would all have to be taken off and sanded back before I could start treating the rust on the underlying metal. That would also extend to treating the edge of the hole, which was rusty too. That multi-tool is my new favourite thing. With the scraper blade attached, it made short work of the task. Half an hour later, and although it wasn't pretty, it was ready for sanding. After sanding, I applied Furtan rust treatment and left it to work. Of course, at this point, I had a big hole in my roof, so how better to stop the rain coming in than with a bit of old wood held securely with two bricks? And a bit of gaffer tape, of course. While the Furtan cured, I decided the collar could do with a spruce up. The paint was not looking its best. This seemed appropriate. If it can withstand a barbecue, it should be OK on a collar that, surprisingly, doesn't actually get that hot anyway. I scrubbed off a load of old grot using a wire brush, shook the can of paint until the ball bearing was free, and applied several light coats. Back at the flue, I wiped off the fur tan, as you're supposed to do, and primed the surface. It was all going to be top-coated in dark blue, so the dodgy look didn't matter. Several hours later, probably the next day, it got a little, very light sanding to give a key, and then a layer of undercoat went on. This was then top-coated twice more in a darker blue, and the time had come to refit the collar. I decided I never wanted to do this again, so I was really going to seal this against water. The collar doesn't actually get that hot, even with the stove at full tilt, so ordinary Sikaflex sealant was fine. I put a line around the middle of the collar, one around the edge of the hole, two lines around the edge of the collar. Arguably, I did go a bit over the top here, as you'll see it all squidged out when I put the thing in place. Here goes, and it just drops into the hole, with the flue coming up inside it. Press it down and, oh look, I appear to have been a tad generous with the sealant. Never mind, I could wipe that off. But I still wanted a definite sealed edge as well, so I went round it once more. The traditional wet workman's finger was used to give a nice edge. And then I remembered to screw the bolts down. Yes, I should have done that earlier, because now that squidged a load more sealant out, and the workman's finger had to come into play again. This work of art, worthy of the turner, was then protected while it dried by a piece of bubble wrap, held in place with gaffer tape. That wasn't the end, of course. Inside, there was still the gap between the flue and the collar. Traditionally, stove rope is shoved up to hold the two apart, so I bought a brand new length and stuck it up the gap. While you're doing this, it's held in place by friction and blind faith, and there was one side where the rope wasn't thick enough, so I had to add another piece. A little bit of wiggling of the flue was also required. That's not bad, but I did need also to make it watertight, of course. For this, you do need a high-temperature, flexible sealant, and this was gunged in on top of the rope in a decent quantity. Guess how I smoothed it off? Yes, the finger again.
nice, although I couldn't stop fiddling with it. Leave it alone! The sealant was also used on the rope inside, so it really should be watertight. Now I just had the small matter of putting the trim back, which of course didn't cover the two new holes I'd unnecessarily made. I bought some wood and made up a frame screwed into the wooden ceiling panel. Here's the end result. No, not perfect, but it'll do. It's just over three months since I did that repair and we have had a handful of really quite heavy rainstorms since then and I'm very pleased to say that absurd amount of sealant I put underneath the chimney collar is doing its job. There has been no more water ingress. Any questions, drop them down below, but that's it for now. Cheerio!